All right, everyone, get ready. We're diving deep into Pride and Prejudice. Jane Austen, one of the greats. We're talking themes, characters, the whole shebang. By the end of this, you'll be practically quoting the book or at least impressing your friends at dinner parties. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope so. There's a lot to unpack. Okay, so first things first. Pride and Prejudice. It's set in England, early 1800s. What's the deal with that time period? Why is it always about marriage? Okay, so back then, marriage. Mm. Huge deal, especially for women. Like, forget about a career or voting. Your future was basically finding a husband. And not just any husband, right? No, no, absolutely not. It had to be someone wealthy, someone who could elevate your family's social standing. Love. Romance. Those were lovely bonuses. But a good marriage was really about economic security. Right, like a business deal, almost. Pretty much. And that's where our girl, Elizabeth Bennett, comes in. She's one of five daughters in this family. And their mom is... Well, let's just say she's got marriage on the brain. Can you blame her? Five daughters in that era, it was like a ticking clock. Totally. But Elizabeth, she's cut from a different cloth. She's intelligent, she's independent, and she sees right through all the societal BS. She's not going to marry just anyone to please her mother or society's expectations. And thank goodness for that, because that's what makes her so compelling. She's not a perfect heroine. She makes mistakes, but she learns and grows. Exactly. She's got flaws, like that whole prejudice thing she's got going on. And then there's Mr. Darcy, the epitome of pride. Oh, yes, Mr. Darcy. He strides into the story like he owns the place, wealthy, handsome, but also arrogant and, well, kind of a jerk at first. To everyone, but especially Elizabeth. Their initial interactions are pure tension and snark. He looks down on her family's lower social status, and she sees him as aloof and proud. It's delicious. Like that scene at the first ball where he refuses to dance with her. Oh, classic Austin. It's not just about the dance. It's about the underlying social dynamics. They represent two different worlds colliding, and those worldviews clash big time. And this is one of the reasons why Pride and Prejudice is so brilliant. It's not just a fluffy romance. It's a sharp social commentary. Austin's holding up a mirror to her society, exposing the absurdity of the class system, the ridiculous pressure on women to marry well. And speaking of pressure, can we talk about that disastrous first proposal? Oh my goodness, yes. Darcy, in all his infinite wisdom, assumes that Elizabeth would be utterly honored by his proposal, despite the fact that he's been openly disdainful towards her and her family. What did he think was going to happen? It's a masterclass in how not to propose. And Elizabeth's response is incredible. She doesn't hold back. She lays into him, calling out his arrogance, his pride, and his terrible treatment of her family. It's glorious. She's not about to compromise her own values and happiness just to become Mrs. Darcy. Exactly. It's such a powerful moment for her character. She chooses herself and her own worth, even when it goes against societal expectations. But then something interesting happens. Darcy actually starts listening. He does. That rejection becomes a turning point for both of them. For Darcy, it forces him to confront his own flaws, his pride and prejudice, if you will. And for Elizabeth, it opens the door for her to see him in a new light. It all starts with that letter, right? He explains his actions, defends himself against some of the accusations, and basically shows a completely different side of himself. It's a slow burn, but we start to see Darcy transforming. He begins to act with more humility, more kindness, and he actually starts treating people with respect, right. regardless of their social standing. And his actions speak louder than words, right? Absolutely. Like, when he steps in to help Elizabeth's family, even after she's rejected him, he saves Lydia from a scandalous situation, risking his own reputation to protect her family. Talk about a grand gesture. Right. And Elizabeth sees all of this, and she starts to realize that she misjudged him. That maybe, just maybe, there's more to Mr. Darcy that meets the eye. And she realizes maybe she's been a little too quick to judge, a little too prejudiced herself. It's a journey of self-discovery for both of them. They challenge each other to grow, to confront their own flaws, and ultimately to become better versions of themselves. And of course, they fall in love. Of course. It wouldn't be a Jane Austen novel without a satisfying romantic resolution. But it's not just about the romance. It's about two people who have seen each other at their worst and best, who have challenged and changed each other, and who choose to build a life together based on mutual respect and understanding. Their marriage, in the end, is a rejection of those rigid social norms. It's about love, yes, but it's also about choosing your own happiness and defying the expectations of society. Which is why Pride and Prejudice continues to resonate with readers centuries later. The themes of love, class, societal pressure, and personal growth, they're still relevant today. 
absolutely. It makes you wonder, though, right? In today's world, with its own unique pressures and social structures, would Elizabeth and Darcy find their way to each other? Or would their pride and prejudice still be insurmountable obstacles? What do you think? It's something to think about, isn't it?